are usually, well, there is a kind of a family curse. I mean, if, 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 if your father's an alcoholic and he beat someone and your mother was a drunk, then usually you're around alcohol and you start doing it. But really what it is, is people that are deceived. That's not what you have to live. Who cares if, if your dad was a werewolf and your mother was a zombie? <laughs> Jesus Christ is, is your daddy now. Yes. Isn't that Amen. true? Yes. The word of God is what, what you have. It's Lord. not the past. The Bible says when you're born again, you're dying to those things. They have no power over you unless you Come on. accept it. Right. But you can accept the power of the living God at the same time. Yes. Who are you going to believe? Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Years ago, when I was, I was in the Marine Corps in Vietnam, I, I shot and I died, and I left my body. I saw my body, and I went way up, and then, I, you know, when you go up, it's always nice, but all of a sudden, phew, straight down, and I went into the earth. And when you go below the earth, I wasn't a Christian in those days. I didn't know who Jesus was. I thought he was a swear word in my days, but when you go below the earth, it, it's... It's total hopelessness. It's beyond human comprehending, but you're told it's a total hopelessness. It's total sadness. And, and you just know that you know, you know, this is, it, it's just, there's nothing left. And you can hear people crying a chorus, crying out, if only, if only, if only, I would have received it when I had the chance. And others crying out, too late, too late. But with all that, it's dark, but you can see. And then, if, if you want a description of what it looks like there, this creaking floor is going to do a job. <laughs> <laughs> but, Excuse me. Get a little more air here. That's sure. Okay. But if you want an idea, just One look more. at some of the two more. Look at some of the rock. Two more. The uh, I look at way too fast. The rock albums they have, and you get two an more. idea of what it looks like. One. Now one more. Okay, that's good. Excuse me. Thank you. That feels good. That reminds me when I was standing underneath the helicopter. <laughs> but all of a sudden, something grabbed me by my shoulder and said, it's not your time. And I went way back up, and I went right down into my body. When I landed in that body, I had excruciating pain. And for 11 years, I was a hopeless cripple. I was crawling on my hands and knees. I didn't know who this was that said it wasn't my time. Mm. And no one told me for 11 years. Can you imagine? Oh. Mm -hmm. Not one human being. Every one of them says, if you don't go to church, you're going to hell. Well, I figured I didn't want to go to their churches because on Sundays, they would cut you off pulling out of their parking lots. <laughs> they, <laughs> if you tried to, uh, <clears throat> you tried to, you had the right of way. And they, <clears throat> I said, whoa. Can't be that good if they're all racing to get out. <laughs> <laughs> they could go in the restaurant. They're all bad mouthing each other. How bad it was, and how. And I thought, well, that's obviously, that's not what I want. But then one day, one day, I heard the the Bible on tape. See, faith comes from hearing the word of God. <clears throat> Fellow working on my house was playing Alexander Sorby with the uh, Bible tape <clears throat> on a stereo. And that's what got me saved. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Was hearing the word of God that no one ever gave me. All they did was just preach hell. Jesus said, if you preach hell, you're not going to get anyone saved because people believed in hell that already be saved. Hell is for the believers to be preached to. So they know what to, what to, 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 to get people the lost. They know what's going to happen to them. But you preach hell to the lost, they don't believe it. If they did, they'd be saved. Come on, let's lighten yeah. up. Yeah. That's common sense, isn't it? Yeah. When Jesus says something, it's simple. It's common sense. <laughs> People preached hell to me. I didn't believe it. You're getting quiet now. <laughs> You're not going to win. That's why you haven't won any souls. That's why all your programs haven't done anything. Because if they believed in hell, they would be saved. Isn't that true? Mm -hmm. The believer learns about hell, and that's when they rush out to save everyone. Yeah. But anyway, 11 years, and here I get saved listening to Alexander Scorby's Bible tape. And I said, Jesus, if you're real, prove it to me. And he walked into the room, and I was instantly healed. But well, see, it's the truth that sets you free. Mm -hmm. yes. I didn't get it from the people in this world. Mm -hmm. It was the truth. Just a Bible tape. 
praise God. Are you listening? Yes. So that's what sets you free. But in 1985, I lost my right eye in an accident. I was logging my property, and the stick went completely through. Rushed to the eye surgeon. Mm. He says, you're blind. They, they, they were going to amputate the eye out, but it was too much swelling. He says, come at the end of the week. I thought, wait a minute. I didn't come to the earth, this earth with, to, to lose my eye. How am I going to read the Bible? I said, Jesus, right in front of the doctor. I said, you created this eye. You need nothing to do with me. And I... Thank you. Are you listening? Yes. When you acknowledge Jesus Christ, yes. that's how Jesus prayed in the Bible. Father, I thank you. Yes. He didn't sit there and beg. Oh, I need an eye. I'm, no. He say, Father, I thank you. When you acknowledge Jesus, you're telling all the world who your source is. Yes. And the louder you say it, the greater the power. Mm -hmm. And I stood Jesus. in front of that doctor and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, you created this eye, be nothing, give me a new one. Well, he thought I was besides myself. He started giving me prescriptions for sedatives. I said, I don't need anything. He says, I'll give you for pain. I don't feel any pain. He says, you're in denial. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm not. He says, well, take the prescription in case you have pain. I didn't he put a patch over my eye with all kinds of antibiotics. <coughs> First day went by, I didn't have a new eye. Thank you, Jesus. Every time I'd get discouraged, thank you, Jesus. Acknowledge him. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with what? All. All. Not part. See, most of us, we do part of our heart. All your heart. Yes. In all your ways. Not in some of your ways. Not when you feel good. See, if a lot of you... If, if a lot of you go by your feelings, that's why you don't go to church to fellowship with other people on certain days. It's not in all your ways. No, it doesn't matter what you feel. You just do it. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. He's your source, yes. and He'll direct your path. Are you listening? Yes. Second day, thank you, Jesus. Third day, I woke up with a brand new eye. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Went back to the doctor. He fell to his knees. He said, this is what I've been looking for all my life. Oh. Now, some, oh. some wacko said that God plucked my eye out to get the doctor saved. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever there's a miracle, people see it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. yes. I didn't go by what I heard or seen. Mm -hmm. Yes. I actually had, didn't have any choice. Mm -hmm. Then I had... In 1989, I was in a little 10-foot teardrop travel trailer. Someone told me to, to stay in. The Lord spoke to me emphatically. He said, son, do not stay in town. I was done ministering at a church. He said, I want you to drive home. Well, a big snowstorm came. And I said, uh, I said, okay, Lord, but this fellow insisted, insisted. He said, no, I will not take no for an answer. Oh. So it was one of the biggest sins of my life. I tell people, if you don't listen to God, you can get burnt. <laughs> I wake up at 3 in the morning, a voice says, get out now, don't stop, don't even look back, get out. I said, no, Lord, I have to have my coffee first. Oh. <laughs> I lit the stove and the whole thing blew up. Oh. It, it wasn't even a trail, I was standing on a platform, my socks melted right into the carpet. I couldn't move. My whole body was on fire. I could, I, my feet were welded to the carpet, the fire department came, they had to cut the carpet out. The fire department gave uh, four thousand dollars to a benevolent fund to bury me. Oh. I was in bad shape. Nope. In fact, that's pretty bad when you're laying there and the paramedic starts puking. <laughs> and then the neighbor walked over and started screaming. And then the Red Cross gave three thousand dollars for a burial fund. Oh. <laughs> and I'm sitting there. I, they, they rushed me to the emergency room and I said, Doctor, I got to get home. I got to feed my animals. The doctor says you'll never go home. And I looked, and all I could see was a bone. There was no meat on me. Fingers were blown off. Everything. Third degree birds from head to toe. And the uh, doctor says, you'll never go home. Because I had glass and plastic and wood and carpet and rubber, metal, all embedded in my body. She said, the infection will kill you. But you, there's nothing left of you. I said, Are you, is there any hope? And she said, no. I said, is there a 5% chance? She said, no. I said, how about three? 
Oh, I'll say that. I thought if I can get by the next one, I'm going to get healed. <laughs> I said, is there a 1% chance? She said, absolutely not. You won't last the week. I said, good, Father. In the name of Jesus, you created this body. There'd be nothing to give me a new one. Well, it's easy for a lot of you to sit there, but if any of you have been burned from head to toe, the pain doesn't stop. I mean, it's intense. The first day, I'm laying in the hospital. I never, they never had an MD examine me from the day they put me in the burn ward. They had me in the corner of the burn ward waiting for me to die. That's a true fact. Never did a doctor ever see me. They just had LVNs come just to throw morphine on me. 